And let me welcome you to this, our final session of the Challenges of Government 2012 Galvanizing Growth um, Conference. And a special welcome to those of you who are joining us for the open afternoon of the Blavatnik School of Government. It's my great pleasure to introduce the Vice Chancellor of Oxford University, Andrew Hamilton. Nairi, thank Nairi, thank you very much indeed. And ladies and gentlemen, it's my enormous pleasure, rather belatedly, I'm afraid, but it's my pleasure to welcome uh, you all to Oxford as you're beginning to plan your departures. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Oxford. And we, we are so pleased that, that you are here. We are so pleased that you are participating in this very important symposium discussion on a problem of such critical centrality to the world in this second decade of the 21st century, economic growth and how it can be stimulated, how it can be galvanized. Of course, you are also here playing another very important role. You are participating in the first of what we all hope will be an annual series of conferences focused here at the Blavatnik School of Government on issues of enormous importance to the world in the current day. And of course, for us, this type of symposium, the, all of you coming to Oxford, gives us an opportunity to learn from you. It gives us an opportunity to get insight from you, not only about these challenging problems, but also about the growth and the future of the School of Government. And so I particularly want to thank all of you for the involvement, the discussion, the suggestions, the ideas that you've been giving over these last two days about the future of this School of Government. It's in its first year. It will be an absolutely critical part of the future of Oxford University and your involvement, your participation from many different parts of the world is very important to us. Thank you for that. We look forward to hearing from you in future years. We look forward to working with you to identify internship opportunities for our students. We look forward to working with you to find ways in which you perhaps might sponsor our students and do other forms of support for the School of Government. There are lots of ways in which this partnership, I believe, and I know Nairi does as well, can be of enormous importance to you, but very especially to Oxford and the School of Government. So many, many thanks to all of you. Now, as a Vice Chancellor, you might notice I had a rather, rather lightness in my step as I arrived here. And of course, that lightness in my step comes not just because of the success of this symposium, it comes not just because of the success of the Blavatnik School of Government. It comes from the success of the Oxford University rugby team. Because some of you, some of you, this is for you, Gideon. <laughs> Gideon is a Cambridge graduate like me, so. Uh, uh, yesterday, the Oxford University rugby team overcame adversity. They overcame a 13-point deficit, and in doing so, they overcame Cambridge in one of the most exciting varsity matches in a long time. It was a glorious celebration, as these events always are, of two, and I say two very importantly, two of the great universities of the world. It was a celebration on the sporting field, but it was even more than that, a celebration of the role that those two universities have played in scholarship, in the world of knowledge over many centuries. And, and every one of those students who was playing was a real student, studying a real course, medicine, politics, business, many different things. And, and it was that celebration of scholarship that, that forgive me, 
just in one or two moments. It's very rare for me to have so many policymakers, current and future policymakers, in a room at one time. You are here to discuss galvanizing growth. Let me just say a couple of words. Monica Toft told me I should make three points, and I will do so right now. <laughs> what role do universities have to play in galvanizing growth? What role can the great universities of the world, like Harvard, like Yale, like Oxford, like Cambridge, like many of the universities in your countries? And I think for me there are three points. Yes, three points. The first, as we tackle this very difficult challenge of, of, of economic growth, the, 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 the principal challenge for the world in, to, in 2012, I think great universities have value in their example. And why do I say example? Oxford University is nearly 900 years old. We trace our origins to the 11th century. And what do I mean by that? I mean that, that we are an institution that has sustained, that has grown, that has survived through many centuries. I tell my colleagues as we talk about the challenge that comes with another budget cut from the government or another particular challenge as a result of the economic crisis, I tell my colleagues, you know, yes, this, is th this, this economic challenge we have is a serious one, but if you want a crisis, the bubonic plague was a crisis. <laughs> and Oxford University survived the bubonic plague. We are nearly 900 years old. There is only one institution that is older than the oldest universities, Oxford, Paris, and Bologna. There's only one institution that's older than the oldest universities, and that is the Catholic Church. And I remind you, the Catholic Church requires celibacy of its principal participants. <laughs> and I've, I have contemplated suggesting that for the Doms and the students of Oxford, but decided not to. But seriously, seriously, it is this issue of stability that, yes, we have a serious challenge ahead of us, but universities can act as examples of the importance of always remembering the long-term consequences of our actions. And, and that brings me to my second point. And the second point is that universities are committed to the long-term issues involved in education and research. And so it is through the products of our universities and the most important products are our students. They will go on to become leaders. They will go on to become major influencers of the world, of economic direction, of the intellectual life of the world. Nowhere is that more evident than in the Blavatnik School of Government and the wonderful first year of students that we have and the future years who will come to Oxford to be educated, to leave Oxford, and become leaders in their different fields in their different parts of the world. So again, remembering universities always have a long-term view by necessity because education is about influencing the future through our graduates. My third point is that universities absolutely have a direct and important role to play in economic health and galvanizing growth, and a direct one, and even an immediate one. We do have a role to play in the health of our cities that are act as hosts for the great universities. Oxford, the city of Oxford, benefits immensely from Oxford University and its sister institution, Oxford Brooks. Many of you may not realize this university, Oxford University, we have a, an annual budget turnover of two billion pounds a year. We employ tens of thousands of people in the city of Oxford. And so my plea to all of the policy makers out there is growth must be built on a strong foundation. In seeking to galvanize growth, don't damage the core foundation of economic prosperity. And so policy makers don't introduce crazy policies like restrictions on visas for foreign students. Don't introduce restrictive 
restrictive regulations that limit the, op the, the ability of universities to continue to grow and strengthen and be vital hearts, beating hearts at the center of our cities. Universities, of course, have a very important role in a direct relationship with industry. And Oxford, as many universities are, we're deeply involved in partnerships, in spin-out companies, setting up new companies in the Oxford area and beyond, working with our corporate partners, industrial partners on science, in finance, in medicine, in many, many different areas. And universities can and will, with encouragement, play those roles. But again, in developing policies to encourage research partnerships with the corporate world, don't overemphasize the short term. Universities over their history have truly transformed the world through long-term fundamental research. And too much emphasis, too much commitment to the short term can and will damage that long-term role. We come back to the long-term role of 900-year-old universities. There are so many other things I could say, but I've said the three that Monica told me I could only say. And I wanted just to finish by thanking all of you again for being here and participating in this very important symposium in this very important part of Oxford University, which is the Blavatnik School of Government. I did want to just very quickly thank some specific people. I wanted to thank or some specific organizations. The Brazilian National Development Bank, who have supported this symposium and are supporting the school, especially João Carlos Ferraz, who is, uh, has been participating in the conference. I want to thank McKinsey and company for their support, and especially Diana Farrell. Uh, I want to thank the World Bank and the Ford Foundation for their support of this conference and of the school. And again, especially, I want to thank all of you for being here and being such important participants in the life of the Blavatnik School of Government. It gives me great pleasure now to hand over to Gideon Rackman. Gideon is from the Financial Times, as I said earlier. Gideon has the great distinction, as I do, of being a Cambridge graduate and surviving despite that impediment to our educations. <laughs> but, but he is also going to now, I should say that Gideon, we, he may have had the misjudgment to go to Cambridge, but we can be sure that his family have seen the uh, right path because his daughter is studying at Oxford right now. So <laughs> Gideon, it's a pleasure to hand over to you. Thank you.